certifications versus skills, which do I need? In this video, we're going to talk about both certifications and skills. We're going to talk about why you actually need both certifications and skills, but we're going to talk about how each one can actually help you. And whether it's AWS certifications or AWS skills or Azure certifications versus Azure skills or security certifications versus security skills, let's talk about what each one of these uh, platforms can do for you in your career, both the certification and the skill. I'm going to start with certifications and what they can do for you. And I'm also going to talk about what they can't do for you. Certifications do have their place and they can help you get hired. For example, if you have some good certifications in your field, and we'll talk about that more later, not somebody else's field, but if you've got good, strong focus certifications, it can help you get an interview. Now getting an interview to get hired is a huge win. But realistically, understand that the skills that you'll gain out of a certification will not be enough to get hired. But these certifications make it very easy for you to get interviews if they are the right ones. So there's a win already there for certifications and that it can help you get an interview. And I'd like you to think about why. So let's say I have someone with a CISSP, a CCSP, and a CISM three of the best cybersecurity certifications in the world. That looks so good on paper, I'm gonna bring them in for an interview. Now, by comparison, if someone's certifications were all over the place, like an A+, which is more related to PC repair, and then an AWS Security Advanced, and then something else that's related to DevOps, that does not build a strong uh, portfolio, and here's the reason. There are three different entry-level certifications in three different people's careers. So the entry-level certification is probably not going to be enough to get you an interview on its own. And three of them in three different people's careers is probably definitely not going to help you get anywhere. So keep that in mind. So your certifications do matter, but the relevance of those certifications also matter. Now, here's another thing that I like about certifications. Some certifications, the best certifications, serve as a framework for actually learning. Let's take the CISSP, which is one of my favorite certifications in the world. I actually think the CISSP provides the best return on investment of any certification out there based upon it not being too complicated to do. It's nowhere close to the difficulty, say, of a CCIE, but it has almost the same respect as a CCIE. So if we look at the CISSP, it's big and broad. This thing covers a little bit about everything from physical security. to I mean, it covers a little of everything, a little bit. Now, if someone took and passed the CISSP, they probably have 15% of the security knowledge they need for a job. Wait, 15%? Yes. They still need the other 85% to be able to work. But I'll tell you, if you use that, looked at that CISSP curriculum and it said, okay, identity, and you saw that maybe there was a little in there, you could then spend the next year or two learning more about identity. And then when they talked about network security, again, you could dive deep for a year or two and learn uh, more networking and network security. So you could use the CISSP as a framework for learning throughout your career. It has helped me in my career. I used it as a framework and then I spent years learning about many of the domains that were actually in that after I passed the exam. So Big win for certain certifications as it pertains to interviews, gaining some of your fundamental skills, and helping you to build your brand. Now, let's uh, now talk about skills. If you don't have the skills, you cannot be hired. And you won't have the skills from just a certification. So you must get the skills. Now, you can get hired without certifications if you can get an interview. So I've seen people, I've trained people that had no certifications that got a big job, but somehow they had a way to get to the hiring manager. The certifications will make people more likely to interview you, and that's why you need two to three strong ones. Now, the rest of your time should be focused developing the skills for your job, because when we hire, we hire on skills, but they have to be the correct skills. 
Now, here's what I mean. If I want to hire a cloud architect, here's what this person has to have skills-wise. And I'm going to compare that to the cloud engineer, which is why I'm saying they must be the correct skills. If I have a cloud architect, I know they're never going to touch the technology. It's not part of their job. But the cloud architect will be giving presentations. They'll be doing executive briefings. The cloud architect will be speaking to the CIO, CTO, CFO, what have you, and need to be CXO relevant. The cloud architect will be designing systems to optimize business performance. So that cloud architect will definitely need to know business. Now that cloud architect will have to help sell the solutions to the client. So that cloud architect is going to need to have sales skills, for example. Now that cloud architect is going to have to be able to walk in and command a room. So they're going to need something called the executive presence along the way. Now that cloud architect is going to have to lead architecture teams of 15 to 50 people. So they're going to need a lot of, a lot of that. The cloud architect is going to have to manage vendors and stakeholders. Now the cloud architect doesn't need to configure things, but they need knowledge of network design and security design and compute design and storage design and IAM design and security design and to some degree application architecture and a few other things. Now let's compare that to the cloud engineer. Now, the cloud engineer is completely different than the architect. While the cloud architect doesn't touch the technology, the cloud engineer does. So now a cloud engineer is going to have to have good knowledge on how to configure that cloud to a degree at the command line. That cloud engineer is going to have to understand infrastructure as code. Now, that cloud engineer is definitely going to have to understand network data center and cloud technology, what it is, how to work, and how to configure all of that things. That cloud engineer is going to have to be installing applications potentially and configuring things on Windows and Linux operating systems, which means that cloud engineer needs to know Windows and Linux. That cloud engineer will need to automate, so they'll probably need to know some Python, some Bash shell scripting, and Windows Power shell scripting. So, and that cloud engineer will also probably need to know some DevOps concepts. So here we have the architect that doesn't touch the technology and we talked about their skills. And here we have the engineer that does work on the technology and we talked about their skills. So make sure you get the right skills for your job and get the right certifications that match your goals. Now that's the secret to doing it. That's the secret to making it good. Pick the right certifications, pick the big ones that most people don't do, pick the ones that actually stand out, pick the ones that you have a greatest chance of learning something in. Align them exactly with your career goals and then get the training and the career or professional development to actually learn the skills for your job. That's the magic of getting hired and that's what we do. For example, if I train a security architect, I would teach them the CISSP, the CISM and the CCSP. And then I would, after that, I would teach them how to be an architect because that's not going to be covered in these certifications. And I would teach them more about zero trust frameworks, how to design systems, threat modeling, and many, many more things, giving the presentations, doing this. So think about in your career, whatever you do, however you do it, get your certifications, but make sure they match your job and also get the right skills. And when you have the certifications and you have the skills, that's when you can go out there, apply and get hired. So it's not about certifications or skills. It's about both and using them correctly. If you'd like to become a cloud architect, security architect, enterprise architect, AI architect, we have a webinar to assist you in your architecture career. Sign up for one of the free architecture webinars in the description of this video below. If you're looking to become an architect and you need some guidance, there are free eBooks uh, on architecture careers. There are free guide books on how to pass cloud architect interviews and other technical interviews in the description of this video. Go check it out. It's all free. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career, specifically your cloud architect, enterprise architect, AI architect, or security architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now. And I hope to see you on a free webinar.